Uh, here's an, um, an anonymous class which uh, implements an interface and uh, here this time the um, type animal is now an interface um, speaking it and um, here yeah, this uh, dog here yeah, is of uh, be a type animal um, I've made it static just to make it simple to access and um, here you can see uh, with a new animal and uh, I've added this extra method in here called play as well as speak now um, the thing is that um, because um, anonymous classes um, don't have a name that means that um, when you assign this uh, new instance to a type um, it has to be to the um, something uh, of the uh, uh, super type so in this case it will be of type animal yeah so that's got to be of type animal because it's the actual thing you're making doesn't have a doesn't have a, a name it's available as a result of that of course it means that um, this uh, method play of course is, is not accessible uh, if you try and do something like um, play Dog dot play there, um, it uh, it won't work. It'll give you a compiler error, and the reason for that, of course, is because um, dog is of type animal, and animal has got no play method. So there's no way to uh, call it from outside of that class. Now, of course, inside this anonymous class here, you can of course use this method quite easily. I could, for instance, have put uh, that play in there, for instance, to run of that, and that would work quite happily. Okay, so now when I said, of course, it's not accessible outside, um, uh, there, there are things that you can do. There's something called reflection, which will now you to get all sorts of things. But that's only for that's a, an API that's used for um, things like debuggers and stuff like that, which can do all sorts of things. Um, but uh, you can't uh, normally access it like that. Now. Um, Okay, what are we saying here? Uh, you cannot instantiate. In, uh, yeah. Uh, now, of course, this this thing, of course, it is not instantiating that interface. Of course, what it's doing is making a subclass of object which implements that interface. Okay. And, and this down here is roughly what it's equivalent to. Um, we've got uh, something called pet dollar one, of course, which implements animal. And uh, that's effectively the, the class that we're getting uh, with uh, those things in it. And um, we do new pet Donald one there, and sending it to animal because, of course, it's say because it, of course, it implements animal, so it can do that, etc. Rest is. Uh, this is um, using an anonymous class as a parameter. And it's uh, very similar to what you've seen already, really. Um, uh, you want to call some method, for example. And uh, the method takes um, something of interface type as uh, one of its parameters. Now, if you haven't got um, a class handy that implements that interface, well, you can just make one on the spot and pass that. OK, here's, here's, here's it in action. Uh, here's this interface. Uh, it's got a couple of, uh, a couple of methods in it. Uh, M there and N, and uh, is a, a class that um, uh, we got here, which uh, uses it. Um, that it's uh, it's got this uh, method use it in it, which uh, requires something of uh, 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 some uh, parameter of this uh, interface type to be passed to it, with some code in GMB that uses it. Now here's our class here that's. Uh, We've made this uh, variable of type use it there. UI and uh, in this test here, we're going to say UI dot use it right now. It's going to require something of that type to be passed in. So what we do is we make it on the spot. And we go new I just like that, and uh, there we go. We just uh, got something there which implements it. Okay, and then close the bracket. Close that bracket there. Uh, it looks a bit odd, but uh, you do get used to this eventually, and uh, that's fairly simple. Uh, you can do exactly the same sort of thing with classes rather than interfaces. So, if this was a, if this needed a class, well, you could just um, create new with that class, and what you'd end up with, of course, is a, an anonymous subclass of that class. 
Um, of course, with classes, it, it's likely to be an abstract class that you're doing it with, though there's nothing wrong with doing it with an ordinary class. But it just doesn't happen quite so often. Okay, now this is used all over the place in uh, Swing, so you have to get used to it. Okay, what about uh, class names? Well, uh, there's no real surprises here. What happens is uh, all the anonymous classes that are in some class, say C, they all get flattened as well, they normally would, uh, and um, they get renamed so they become C dollar n, where n is some integer. And for the Java compiler, what happens is you start with one, and it indicates the order in which they occur in the class. So it's all very simple, really. And uh, here's a little exercise to show. <laughs> What you can get. Um, uh, uh, I've made this uh, deliberately difficult. Hopefully, you're never ever going to see anything as bad as this. But um, if you can start understanding this, of course, then real code is a lot easier. You don't don't ever want to end up writing code like this. That's not the idea. The idea is if you can understand the difficult stuff, you can understand real stuff that actually occurs. So here we go. Here's uh, we've got a class here with uh, just a W with a method WM in it. Doesn't do very much. And uh, an abstract class K with uh, a method KM in it. And an interface I with method IM in it. So let's have a look at this class C here. And um, C, uh, uh, it's got this method T which uh, takes something of type I. And uh, it does something to it. And what it does is, uh, well, I calls. Uh, it means it's uh, we got something of type i. It means we can uh, say i dot i m because i m is in there, and uh, i m takes something of type k. So we make one on the spot like that. And there you go. We've made uh, something of type k and passed it as a parameter. So that's going to get the name c dollar one because it's the first one in the class. And uh, now the next thing we've got um, a method test here, and uh, well, let's call let's call the t, and uh, of course t is going to require something of type i. We haven't got one, so we will make one. There you go, new i. We've got some uh, class here which uh, implements i. Therefore, it starts there, and um, it ends uh, it ends there. Okay, so there you go. We've made something of type i. So that's going to be c dollar two. Right then. <coughs> Inside of this, uh, so we have type i, which implements i. We're going to have to write something which, uh, which uh, uh, um, implements this um, method im. So there it is, im. There you are. We've got something that implements it. It starts there and uh, it ends there. Oh, so we might as well put a bit of code in there. So why not put some code in there? Uh, we've got something of uh, type k here. Okay, is this remember this abstract class? We got some thing we're passing in of type k, so it must have uh, it must uh, it can't be an abstract class. Of course, it must be something which implements uh, implements k it implements this uh, uh, method here. So let's call it km. There we go. And uh, oh look, km requires something of something of type w. So we haven't got one, so let's make one. <laughs> there you go, and then that becomes C dollar one dollar two dollar one. <laughs> and uh, this will good measure we print out new WM. That's the original one. And uh, that's about it. And just to kick things off, we uh, this uh, uh, just to start things off, we just create a new C there and just call test, which. Uh, well, I'll leave you to work out what it does. Nothing special. I think it just prints that out. But uh, there's an example. I just wanted to show something that you could get uh, a, an anonymous method within an anonymous method. Of course, um, uh, you never want to write anything like this. Uh, uh, but uh, you want to be able to understand it. You know, uh, you know, don't turn to the dark side and end up generating code like this. That's not the idea.